A catalogue of the different specimens of pre-World War III drone war plastics in the Earth's southern hemisphere collected on the three voyages of the Trireme, with a particular account of the manner of manufacturing and utilisation in the domestic context of the same, by humans particularly prior to Earth's government caveats and restrictions, and an examination of plastic nomenclature through the compositions and translations of earthling poetry in English by polymer colloid scientist and sociologist McScreen underscore with some anecdotes that happened to Zer and members of the crew time. amongst the earth. If you are able to read this text, bless, it English. means that your nerve center has immediately tapped into the universal obligation. language decoder contained within this book and you will have access to this text in one of your default languages. This language decoder spans across the vast distances from the Milky Way through the Phoenix Dwarf Galaxy, Andromeda 18, FM 2001, and as far as Centaurus A. If you reside beyond these neighbourhoods, the decoder will need to be reconfigured. This tome is respectfully held in stasis and is available for research purposes by permission of the planet greater than in accordance with the Intergalactic Archive and Artifact Agreement. You may be reading this beyond my lifetime. My name is Green underscore. I am a child of the planet greater than. My area of expertise is the planet Earth, its polymers and their historic, domestic and social sexual use by humans or earthlings. I have joined the maiden voyage of the Trireme as the polymer expert, human negotiator and mining consultant seeking to mine the Earth's South Pacific Gaia garbage patch for the microplastics that are of enormous value to our economy, infrastructure and industry. My method of first contact evolved from extensive research, drama role play, dissections of space junk, scholarly interrogation of human space, time capsules, archives sent to space in the mid-20th 21st, 22nd centuries, study of Earth, human artefacts, okay. traded between our and I, I and primarily so fortunate enough to be gifted some of the samples you see in this book by the human earthlings we encountered. They were particularly partial to our vocal meditations, which they called music. Our vocal work seemed to have a profound effect on their psyches and mood. Humans would arrive at our vessel with arms full of polymer specimens at the ready so they could listen to our simple afternoon vocal exercises. The exchange of something so valuable with something so commonplace struck the crew and I as humorous. Yet when observing the effect our vocal exercises had on the humans, we concluded that the humans must tune into our vocal vibrations, which must bring about a state of ecstasy and immense well-being. An anecdote pertaining to specimen number 21 of the catalogue. Nylon cable ties. Some humans seemed at last to trust us without our earthling masks. They seemed most desperate to give us whatever we wanted in exchange for an audience with us during our meditative vocal exercises. It was in exchange for two earth hours of meditative vocalizations that allowed me to acquire a length of bubble wrap that I had been coveting for some days. On this day, a male and his son came to trade some polymer items from their personal collections. They had a wonderful collection of colourful cable ties. My fellow crew member decided to test the human and pointed to the earthling's son, J. 
gesturing that the child should be traded rather than the cable ties. When the human refused, my crewmate began to vocalise. The human and his son became euphoric. On requesting again to take the human's son, the earthling agreed. Of course, my crewmate knew that the child could not be kept and that our vocalisations rendered the earthlings agreeable to anything. Thus vulnerable. The human and his child placed the cable ties at our feet and hurried away. This amused my colleague a great deal, who had been pining for home and was tiring of this forsaken planet. It was all in good jest and nobody was hurt. After the incident, my crewmate commented on the strong bonds between human creatures and we both realised that we could use our immense power to our advantage if we were ever to experience serious insubordination. Pertaining to specimen number 15 in the catalogue. A sample of pharmaceutical PVC, blister packaging, thermoformed and heat sealed to foil. The lolly. In the early 21st century, it is documented that every human was delivered a bowel cancer test kit on their 50th birthday. Life was to be preserved at all costs, even if the human was feeble or sick. In the year 2079, every human was personally delivered a small, numbered and tracked pill on their 70th birthday. The pill, dubbed the lolly, dispatched the taker painlessly without any embarrassing conniptions or soiling. After taking the pill and prior to death, the taker of the lolly would experience a period of immeasurable well-being and feelings of euphoria never experienced before. The taker of the pill was placed on an honour list as an honourable space giver. After World War III, the environmentally friendly drone war, there was no use for the lolly, as the global human population had been reduced by 75%. In the catalogue is a sample of the lolly traded with a private collector in exchange for two earth weeks of my meditative song, which is said to be similar to the euphoric effect that the lolly once gave. I was able to trade for an original pair of 2019 latex rubber gloves. I traded a private session of my vocal meditation. I am still amused at the effect my daily meditations have on the human recipient. They are moved to ecstasy and all humans seem to respond with the same facial expressions and vocalizations. It is fascinating that a recorded version of our meditations will not produce the same effect on the human. I can trade for almost anything with my voice. I wear my gloves on very special occasions only. I like to consider myself an amateur poet. I write in the earthling language of English. Here is a poem I wrote about dressing in my rubber gloves. It is entitled On Dressing in a Rubber Glove by Mux Green Underscore. My digits powdered and covered with this sheath of latex, mutable snap, stretch. My fingerprints disappear and anonymity arrives. 
I could be anyone, no one. Such freedom, a handsome barrier, the texture of your skin unreachable, a tautology of touch, with an imagining of touching, precious repetition, more real than reality itself. One of my very favourite plastics to collect is cling wrap, also once known as glad wrap. This material is made from PVC, polyvinyl lidine chloride. It is used to wrap food, but it is mostly used in sexual activity. The humans like to be wrapped in glad wrap and have their oxygen limited as it aids arousal. This is why it is called glad wrap as it makes humans very happy. Here is a poem I wrote about glad rap. It is entitled, With the Man from Glad, a love poem about cling rap. A poem in Earth English by Mux Green underscore. I was organised to fly with you in the balloon, on spiral thermal updrafts, you wrapped me in cling wrap and cut off my oxygen until my mind sparked and I orgasmed powerfully in an earth spiral, a human spiral, the spiral of beginning, of all, of forever. I am glad. Pertaining to specimen 13, from a catalogue of the different specimens of cloth collected on the three voyages of Captain Cook to the Southern Hemisphere, from the Russell and Mab Grimwade Bequest Rare Books Collection, an anecdote from Otaheite, known also as Tahiti. A number of the natives were on board of the resolution one of the chiefs took a particular liking to an old blunt iron which lay upon one of the officer's chests and taking hold of a boy about nine years of age offered him in exchange pointing to the iron. The gentleman, although he knew he could not keep the youth yet willing to see if he would willingly stay or if any of the rest would claim him, took the child and gave the savage the iron, upon which a woman, who appeared rather young for the mother, sprung from the other side of the ship, and with the highest emotions of grief, seemed to bewail the loss of the infant. But the, but but the lieutenant, with, with a true British, British spirit, took him by the hand and presented him to her, upon which, after putting her hands twice upon her head, she unbound the roll of cloth which was around her body and from which this specimen was cut and having spread it before him seized the boy and jumping into the sea both swam ashore nor could he ever learn whether she was the mother, sister or relation and this he lamented the more as such affection was very seldom seen among those people. <coughs> But the lieutenant, with a true British spirit, Thank <laughs> you.
Oh, <laughs> man. 